This is Apple's brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's got the 13 inch Retina display, an eight core CPU, the super popular touch bar with touch ID, two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. Uh, actually that's the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. Sorry, Craig. This is the new MacBook Pro and it's totally understandable that we got the two confused. Other than the processor inside, these two machines seem exactly the same. Apple's eagerly awaited M2 chip has finally arrived and no one, and I really do mean no one, seems excited about the vessel heralding its arrival, the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Reviews are pretty unanimous across the board. It's a good laptop with great battery life, but it doesn't have enough ports, the display doesn't support high refresh rates, it's too expensive for what you get, and it's already overshadowed by the redesigned MacBook Air being released in a few weeks. We're guessing that this is pretty much the 2020 model with an upgraded logic board, but we won't know for sure until we tear it down. The chassis of the machines are identical, right down to the model number printed on the bottom of the case. With the exception of this tiny EMC number on the back, there is not a single thing we can identify that's different about the exteriors. The bottom cover and screws are the same, as is the removal procedure for the cover. That's to say, unnecessarily difficult. Here's where things get really interesting. Look at this shot of the two logic boards. It's clear that some of the chips and smaller components have changed, but otherwise everything else looks identical. Cables, grounding pins, screws and standoffs, you name it, the interior of the machines are identical in all things other than the logic board itself. One exception that stands out, the heatsink on the M1 has slightly rounded corners as compared to the squared off corners on the M2. At this point, we're wondering if Apple has made their first truly upgradable laptop, which would surprisingly put them in the same category as Framework. If you haven't heard already, Framework has begun production on a world first upgradable laptop motherboard, which is due for release later this year. Did Apple beat them to the punch? This needs to be tested, but first we need to free up the logic board from the case. First up, we disconnect the trackpad and battery from the rest of the board, followed by the remaining components. This is fiddly work and those cables are pretty delicate. Here's the moment of truth. All the cables are loose and we're free to take the M2 logic board out. Okay, let's see if the M2 board will fit in the M1 case. And it's a perfect match. We should test to see if the machine powers on. We eventually get it to boot, but it can't detect the built-in peripherals. After checking the cables and reseating everything several times, replacing the touch ID sensor between machines and perhaps a dozen other tests, we finally concede defeat and reached out to Hector from the Asahi Linux project. We're told that the M2 trackpad has offloaded some processes to the SOC. We can't say for certain that this is serialization, but for all intents and purposes, in its current state, it serves the same purpose. In other words, this blocks a full logic board upgrade unless you change the trackpad with an M2 compatible one. This machine works just fine with an external mouse and keyboard attached, but then it wouldn't be a laptop if you had to drag around this thing with you. But maybe that's the point. In our tests, we found that the components that have some or all functionality disabled are the trackpad, keyboard, and touch ID sensor. The latter of which is understandable, but we find the decision to disable the trackpad and keyboard baffling if intentional. There is a positive side to all of this. We're assuming that these machines will eventually be added to Apple's self-service repair program. And if that's the case, you will have a repairable laptop. Will they allow you to upgrade from the M1 to the M2? That's doubtful because Apple, but who knows, maybe. The parts are clearly cross compatible and we're again faced with what seems like an attempt to block repairs and replacements through software logs. Previous arguments for the lack of upgradability between generations have centered around size considerations within the chassis or cost considerations or manufacturing limitations. Well, then how do we explain this? As a final note on the hardware, reviewers have commented on the slower read-write speeds on the M2 device. They've narrowed the problem down to one 256GB SSD chip on the board doing all the work, whereas the M1 used two 128GB SSD chips to spread the workload. With two SSD chips, the system reads and writes up to twice as fast because it's performing the operations at the same time. This is essentially a RAID 0 setup. It may seem wild that Apple has used the same components between two generations of devices, but in a world where rampant consumption isn't the norm, this makes perfect sense. The pandemic has exposed flaws in our supply chains that have led to chip shortages and eventually culminated in odd decisions such as this. As far as we're concerned, this is a missed opportunity for Apple to introduce their first upgradable device in a good long time. 
What's more, it's a missed opportunity for the electronics juggernaut to set the tone for repairability and eco-friendly design. Whether intentionally or not, Apple has shown that a more sustainable approach to technological progress is possible. Now, in its current state, unfortunately, it appears to be hampered by artificial software locks.